Hi there. In this uh, video, I'm going to show you how to get A1 music playing in AGD. Um, the first part of which is going to be just getting the Vortex Tracker tune exported and playing in 1 to 8K Basic. So, first step in that is to get Vortex Tracker loaded, and I'm going to load one of the standard tunes that come with it and uh, play nicely. So, when you're actually exporting uh, Vortex Tracker, you come up to Export, come down to Save with ZX Spectrum Player, and there's some important addresses to uh, to note down here. So uh, I'm going to open up a little text box so we can write these in. So this is the address that the player gets loaded to. So um, in this case, it says 49152, and that's fine for this first test, but when we're using it in AGD, um, you're going to have used up that RAM on any decent sized game, so you can you can bump that up uh, a little bit higher. So what we'll do is we'll say um, that our player is exported to 57,000. Okay, so the player code is at 57,000. Now down here it shows the module address. Now it shows this in hex. Um, so you could actually just type up here E716 and that tells us that the tune address is 59158 switch that back to 50,000 uh, sorry to uh, 57,000 that's just you can use um, Windows calculator or you know an online hex converter or whatever you you like to get that. So our player is going to be exported at 57,000. Our tune is going to be exported at E716, which is 59158. And we're going to save this out as a tap file, player and module separately. Okay. We're going to hit OK. And we're going to put that on the desktop and we'll call it tune. And it's saving it as a tap file. Okay. So that's saving it as a tap file. Now, we can get rid of this and uh, we'll save our addresses just in case so now that we've uh, got that if we just actually try and run tune I'm going to use uh, I've got fuse emulator associated with tap files so you'll see it doesn't actually do anything other than load the code blocks in so there you go that's it just trying to endlessly load uh, the player and the tune so on that tape uh, we can see in fact if we run this through um, tape editor you'll see or tap editor sorry you'll see there we go so there's the VT player and the tune there's no uh, program like you know for load quotes quotes it's just two code blocks um, so we've got to add our machine code call into this so that we can actually um, get the, the call to call the player and the player calls the tune now ultimately this is just going to play an ay tune in basic it's going to start playing and lock the whole sinclair up it's it's not going to um come back to a command prompt you know to cursors and things like that it takes over the whole system plays the tune until the end and then quits back to to command line so um this obviously isn't going to work in AGD. This is a test to see that the tune is exported properly and that we can get it playing on the 1 to 8K system. So, next thing is we are going to need to put some code together. So, we're going to use Spin for this. Now, Spin, it's not without its issues. I've had it crash on me a few times, so we'll quickly go and see where we get with this. So, I'm going to go Tools, Z80 Assembler. And just put this down here. So I've prepared the, uh, the code here. It's just that. And I'm just going to copy and paste it into there. You can pause the video and, and have a type that in if need be. Um, so what this code does is this says, where is, set the start. So where is the start of the player code? So we set that we know to 57,000, which is there. And then this, I'll be honest, I'm not a big assembler guy. This is mostly stuff I've 
uh, sort of gleamed off the net, looking on the AGD forums, things like that. Um, so this basically tells the variable start you are 57,000 and then it loads that in and calls it and this loop essentially plays the tune, the next bit of the tune over and over and over until it gets to the end and then it returns, or at least that's how I understand it. So, now we've, we've got the assembly code here and we've got a completely blank spectrum here. So, uh, oh and it goes without saying that this is a 1 to 8k spectrum, you can't do this on a 48 because it's A1. So, what we're going to need to do is push or assemble our code into RAM. So we're going to do file, assemble. I'm going to say assemble to memory at 56, 500. So let's pop that down in our important addresses. So our core routine, 56, 500. I'll just leave that there so you can see it. So when I hit OK, hopefully what you get is assembled no errors 20 bytes generated now that number as well will be helpful so we'll keep this on screen uh, while we work so what we're going to do is we're going to switch into the emulator itself and we're going to go to 1 to 8k basic uh, now we're going to go up to recording tape recording and insert tape for saving so we're, this works slightly differently to fuse I find fuse is, is much easier to grasp but uh, because we're in spin with the assembler, we've got to do it here. So, tape recording, insert tape for, for saving, and we're going to put our tune.tap file in, and we want to say append, because we don't want to wipe out that tape, we want to tack our code on the end. And then all we need to do is save, quotes, and we'll call it core code, we know it was 56, 500, comma, and it's 20 bytes down here, so we could save 20. I always try to put a little few bytes on the end just in case. So 25. Hit OK. I'll take pressing the key. And that's now saved. So, now what we can do is quit out of this. Uh, so we need to close the assembler first. And close that. And now if we have a look at our tap editor. We open up our Z80 tune. You'll see that we've now got our VT player, our tune, and our call. So I'm going to move this to the top and I'm going to save as tune. I'm going to overwrite it. Okay? So now we've done that, we've essentially saved onto the end of our tape our call routine and then we've used tap editor to move it to the front of the routine and now we can actually bring all three bits of code in to our emulator of choice so I'm going to load tune.tap into fuse so double click it and it's just going to try and randomly load that so break out of that cursor down to 128 and then let's have a look at our tape browser you see it's, it's worked its way all the way through the tape so we're just going to do this manually so you can see each step and obviously you could save this into a basic loader if you just wanted to make a, a tap file that played a favorite uh, vortex tracker tune so uh, our call routine is at 56 500 down here remember so i'm going to do clear 56 thousand that's cleared ram from 56 thousand upwards i'm then going to do load quote quotes code and that's going to load, if you watch the uh, tape browser, that's going to load the call routine, which it has. And then this is going to load the VT player, which is at its own address, 57,000. And then the final block of code is the tune itself. Now, all being well, when we randomize USR at 56500, it should run the call code, which calls the player, which plays the tune. And you'll see how it locks it up and doesn't come back. And then let's see what happens. There we go. It's working. So you can see no cursor, totally locked up. So 
we, we now know that our VT player and our tune code are all fine, and this fairly basic um, call routine is working fine. So in the next part of this, we're going to look at how we can use a different, more involved routine uh, that we call from inside of AGD uh, to actually put in-game music while we're playing the game. Okay, so now that we've got a basic AY tune playing in 1 to 8K Basic, uh, we need to look at how and what needs modifying uh, to get that working in AGD. Now, the difference mainly between running it in AGD is that we actually want a game to play in the background. Um, it's no good if we loaded AGD and as soon as it went to our main menu, uh, it stopped doing the menu or it stopped playing the game and it dedicated everything to playing the tune and only at the end of the tune did it carry on playing the game you want them both at the same time so we need to use an interrupt driven uh, call routine for that now um, I don't understand them in all honesty I just learnt uh, what I have thus far from um, uh, a post on the AGD forums by Alessandro it was a very informative post he documented his code very well and we'll be seeing some of that shortly um, it's uh, it's just a way basically of um, calling the routine and then flip-flopping between two sections of code so you the, the bit of code that runs the game and a bit of code that plays the tune and it just does it fast enough that it appears like it's doing both at once well mo modern day OS's handle this already you know but on in the days of the spectrum it really wasn't a thing so first thing what we're gonna need to do is prepare an actual a GD game so we're not going to make a full game with all levels we're just going to do something very basic set the AY sounds to off so you go to miscellaneous and you set AY sounds to off if they're on it tries to do AY sounds and AY music and it gets choppy so you remember to turn that off before you save um, the game out so straight into this There we go, and we're going to pop that down on the screen. And we're going to set it to type 1 because I want to use uh, an event for type 1 to be a bouncing enemy. S store that. So now, if we just test our game, there we go. Not going to win any game prizes, but in fact, that's going to bounce directly into the corner. Oh well, never mind. So, this is showing us that our engine is ticking and, and things are going along. So. Now what we're going to need to do is um, save this as a as a tape file that we can start to add to. Um, so we go to media tape browser, and that's that's the actual AGD tape. So we're going to clear the tape, and we're going to say in this uh, that we'd like to save the game, call it game, and we'd like a basic loader. So as you can see, that's written out the program and the bytes. And then we go tape write. It's going to ask us for an, an actual tape name. So we're going to call it AGD game dot tap. Save. And that's our file. So if we run that now, there's our game. That's a standalone game. So next thing is uh, we need to find out where our game code is being loaded to. Uh, now I'm not sure in Fuse uh, if this is possible to do. The tape browser doesn't seem to show the load address. So what we're going to do is we're going to get out of Fuse and we're going to run spin and we're going to drop our tape file onto it and just stop it loading. Uh, come up to tape browser and so we can see that our code is loaded at 31107. So when AGD is run in the if you look at the basic loader code which we will shortly it says clear dot and randomize usr dot so you don't know the um the address that it's using it's, it's actually it's 32,000 is the uh, randomized usr call to start the agd code so this is where our code actually starts loading from which is uh, a little bit before 32,000 so we're going to put in and here agd call is 31107. Actually, it's not the call, is it? It's this start. 31107, and the call is 32,000. 
So for the next bit, we're now going to integrate our music files and our player with our uh, AGD tape. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to get out of spin. We're going to load tap editor. We're going to open our ADG game. And there's our game and our code. And then we're going to open our um, tune tape file. So here we've got, uh, if we look at what this is, um, we've got our program, which is our basic loader. We've got our game code. We've got our original call routine. We've got our VT player and we've got our tune. Now we don't need the original call routine as it isn't going to work in AGD. So we can select the call and the code for the call and delete that. And then uh, we could uh, shuffle our VT player and our tune up if we wanted, or we can leave it here absolutely fine I'm going to um, uh, I'm going to leave it there actually because the game code is the biggest chunk uh, of code that we'll be loading so it's big to small so now that we've done that we're going to save that out as a new name and we're going to call this game with tune and I'll actually save that again because I didn't put dot tap on the end game with tune.tap excellent so if we try and run that it'll actually not bother loading the VT player or the tune because we need to edit the basic loader here so that's the next thing to do so you can see that it just loads and runs the game so uh, hard reset and back into on tight care basic and then this took me ages to remember how to do this because it was 35 years since I last coded so merge quotes quotes to load but not run a program and if we have a look at our tape browser we'll just double click to reset it back to the program file there we go so this is our basic uh, loader which it really isn't going to do us any favors at this point so what we're going to need to do is get rid of that so we're going to do 10 clear and we need to clear the address uh, that our AGD starts at. So we've got to be below 31107. So we'll say 31000. Then load code. And it's the game next. So we can just do load quotes, quotes, code, and it'll figure out where it's got to go. Uh, now, this is the VT player. Now this is at 57,000, so I'm going to say code 57,000. And then we've got our tune, which was at 59158. And then we'd need to do 50 would be randomize USR. 32,000 so remember at this stage we haven't got our new call routine and we aren't calling the tune we're just clearing the space loading the game loading the player loading the tune running the game that's all that code does at this point we've yet to write the interrupt driven player at uh, the interrupt driven call routine for the player I should say um, and we haven't even told AGD to use it yet uh, and what we do is we basically go in and out of tap editor replacing old bits with new bits but the base core of this is already done essentially so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to do save quotes loader quotes uh, line zero line zero just means it's going to auto run so we're going to enter that and you can see that that's just tacked the new loader on the end of the tape file so again, like we did earlier, media, write, and we'll call this new loader tap. So when we run this, again, this should load three bits of code and run the game. There we go. So no problems there. So the next step is to get our new interrupt driven call routine and get it in as assembler, get it compiled to memory, save that as a tape file 
so that we can integrate it into our new loader tape that we've just created. So, uh, into spin. into our assembler and we've got our ADG code now uh, again you can get this on the ADG forums um, you can pause and have a look at it as we scroll through it if you need to um, but there's a few important things that you need to uh, review in this so copy it all and paste it there so again Alessandro did a great job of documenting this. This is what made it so much easier for me to, to understand and grasp. So, player EQ. This is the address of the player. Not of this, or ADG, or anything like that. This is the address of the player. Now, this is the address that we got when we exported it way back in VT2. So, the player code is 57,000. So, we're gonna, while we're here, we're going to edit this to 57,000. And then org is the address of this code. So our previous player was at our previous caller was at fifty six five hundred. So we're going to set this to fifty six five hundred as well. And uh, all of this, I don't understand half of what it's on about. In fact, I don't understand most of what it's on about. But essentially, this is the player, but built within an interrupt routine. So this tells the um, the, the player to it, well this tells it to go and do a bit of playing then come back and do a bit of AGD then go and do a bit of playing and then come back and it sort of flip flops between the two and um, gives the illusion of playing music while you're playing a game so what we're going to do is we're going to assemble that into memory uh, assemble to 56 500 and all being well, no errors. Now we can see that used 83 bytes for that code, and that means that the end of this routine is at 56583, which means we're nowhere near 57,000, so we've got plenty of room between the caller and the player. So, now that that's in memory, we've got to uh, save it onto our tape. So, we're going to go to 128K Basic. I'm going to come up here to recording tape recording insert tape for saving and we're going to take our new loader cut file and we're going to append onto the end of it so we're going to save quotes call quotes code 56500 comma 85 80, you could do it to 83 if you wish that's going to save and that's now saved if we now check that tape file, we can see there's our new call routine. Uh, I'm going to push this to there, and uh, our new loader, uh, we're going to push to the front of the tape. So we've now got our new loader. We've got our game code, we've got our interrupt call routine, we've got our VT player, and we've got our tune. I'm going to save that as nearly done. Okay, there we go. Now that we've got that all saved, uh, next step is to go back into Fuse and update our basic loader so that we can uh, put that extra li uh, code load in. So, just going to hard reset that. Go to the tape browser. There we go. So, remember, if we look at this, we load. This is the the program. This is loader. Then we load the game code, which is there. Then we load, originally we loaded the player, which we know was at 57,000. Then we loaded the tune. So we've got to put in 25, load, quotes, quotes, code, 56,500. So that then says, load the game, load the interrupt call, load the player, load the tune, run the game. So this is essentially all we need to do now in this 
um, in this basic program. So we're going to save this as loader2 line 0. Again, that's tacked it on the end of the tape. With fuse, don't forget to write that tape out. Finished loader. You notice I'm using a different name every time for this. Much easier, especially with AGD, when it can um, something goes corrupt. It's much easier just to go back to a new save file. Don't keep constantly overwriting the same file because if you mess something up or you miss something, you've got to go back to the beginning, and it's it's just wasted your time. So that the next step, of course, is we've got to come in and edit the order of the the tape file. We now don't need the original loader, so we can select both of those and delete. Select the first two. Put that at the top. So now that's the newest loader. Then the game code. Then the interrupt caller. Then the player. Then the tune. So again, I'm going to. Uh, save that out under a new new name so just agd to go dot tap okay so the final part of this is to actually put the asm call into the game so that when you load the game and execute the game the game knows to call the interrupt routine so uh we're going to be going into fuse and uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to load just the base adg and I'm going to go to tape browser. That's the, the AGD tape. So I'm now going to give it our tape. Just AGD to go. And you can see that's our game that we've, or that's our tape we've prepared. I'm going to select the game bytes. And then I'm going to come over to AGD and I'm going to say load game. So that's now loaded our game back into the editor. So if we run it, there's our game. So. The step that we need to do now is actually put the ASM call in, and an ASM call is three lines inside an event. Now, the event we've got to do is the game initialization event. And I would recommend coming to the end of this. Um, what I've found is if you're using a intro main menu screen, you can call the music there, but I found when I was going into the game initialization screen, uh, it would hang the music and crash so um, there's a way of stopping the music and then starting it with a different call but uh, what I'd say is for now if you're going to use an intro menu uh, put your music call in the game initialization script which comes after it rather than before so the way we work out the ASM uh, there's a couple of ways you can do it with calculator in Windows and whatnot but uh, over on funspot.it there's a very good ASM calculator, uh, which just gives you the three lines you need, or the three numbers you need to type in. So let's have a look at that. So this is defaulting to 50,000. So it's showing you that you need to ASM 205, ASM 80, and ASM 195. Now we know that we need 56,500 is our call routine. So we need a 205, a 180, and a 220. So what we're going to do is we're going to say ASM 205, which is the command call, ASM 180, and ASM 220. Now this um, is basically allowing AGD to machine code call the interrupt routine, which of course in that has been told to call the player routine, and the player routine dips in and out of the tune data. So we need to store this. And then we come back to our main menu, and then we're going to save our game. And we're going to call it Game 2, just so that we know it's different on the tape. And we don't want to create a basic loader. So we're going to save this on the end of our current tape. Now, it's very important that you don't run the game at this point. When you put ASM calls into AGD, obviously the, the other things aren't loaded in yet. We haven't brought them in. You'd have you'd have to make up a custom AGD tape that was load the player, load the interrupt call, load the music, and then load AGD 
and so you're editing with all that stuff in memory so right now none of our stuff is in memory so if we start making calls to memory we could crash it could do nothing but it, it more than likely just crash so what we'll do is we will write our tape out first write our tape so we'll say all done by the order dot tap and let's see what happens if we run it we might as well okay so it did nothing but didn't crash which is a plus so now we can come out of this and we can go into our tap editor and we can load all done by the order now here's our original game code which we can get rid of and here's our new game code which we can put back in its place and we're going to save that as complete so let's give that a test there we go that's AGD playing a game and playing a tune at the same time um, if you find that the audio is uh, choppy uh, when you get it into AGD it usually means that you've um, forgot to turn off uh, AY sounds inside of AGD in the miscellaneous menu um, I did originally and when I did first tested this it was choppy and I thought it was in the recording software but uh, it's, uh, it's that option so don't forget to turn that off. But there we go, that's how you get music into games.